Well, it's a special opportunity to say hello to everybody watching this video. My name is Ray Flynn, former mayor of Boston, United States ambassador. This is my wife, Kathy, Kathy Coyne Flynn. And this is my grandson, Braden O'Doherty. Um, Braden O'Doherty's father's from, from uh, Dublin. Kathy's mother and father are from Galway. Uh, my grandparents are from County Cork. Uh, my grand grandfather's from County Galway. So uh, we're ca we're um, we're true Irish proud people that grew up when, in the great Irish tradition in Boston. And I was had the opportunity to be involved in the Good Friday Peace Ag Agreement in an, on a number of levels starting back in 1968. I started in the legislature way back. Introduced a resolution to for peace and justice in the United Island. It's one of the first resolutions in the United States. And uh, got a number of opportunities to meet with visiting dignitaries and presidents and members of the, the government and the Taoiseach and whatever over the over the many years. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the things that I'm most happy about is that I was invited to New York to participate in the first presidential uh, forum uh, that talked about issues of Ireland at the time. This is during the Troubles. And uh, all the candidates for president of the United States were were uh, invited. And Paul O'Dwyer was a very famous Irishman from New York. His brother was the mayor of New York, and Paul was a city councilor. And uh, Paul and I uh, kind of headed up this forum, and I asked the question, if you're elected president of the United States, will you appoint a peace envoy to Northern Ireland, which later resulted President Clinton getting elected and I served as United States Ambassador but um, to under President Clinton but what 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 I most like to talk about or to mention is that when we talk about the movement of the peace movement in Northern Ireland ending the troubles and whatever uh, we always talk about politicians and what they did but nothing could be further from the truth. It was the grassroots, working class Irish that came from Ireland, settled in Boston mostly, then New York, the rest of the country. But they were so active in American politics, in the church, the Catholic Church, in the community, in the unions, that the Irish people and their sons and daughters, Irish Americans, they had a, a very important voice, political voice in America. And they changed the course of events, more so than any politician. So when I hear politicians taking all the credit for bringing peace and justice in the Good Friday Agreement, I like to say it was really just average working class Irish men and women going to these meetings every night, having a powerful impact on the political process. And so that's the one issue that I'd like to get out there. Kathy's mother and father from, from, from Galway, wonderful, wonderful people. Father, her father like mine, was a dock worker, a member of the International Longshoremen's Association. Mother was, uh, worked in the hospital cleaning woman, like my mother. These are the people that, that made a difference in America. Braden's father, my grandson, Braden, Braden's father was born in uh, County um, Dublin, in Dublin. And um, Braden is the joy of our life. Kathy, yeah. what would you like to say? Um, <coughs> I, th I, I have a wonderful picture of uh, my father coming to America on the ship, the Laconia, with um, two other fellows. There was my father, who was Francis Coyne, and then the other fellow was uh, um, a Joyce fella and a Davis fella. 
because the two names were written on the back of the picture. And you could see the Laconia written um, on the picture, so that was the ship that they came over. Um, my mother came over too also, she landed in Boston. My mother told me when she came here, she came by herself because her sisters, uh, her sister Catherine and her sister Nora were already here. And my mother told me that she was at the bottom of the ship by herself coming out. And she was seasick the whole time. That was, I think, in 19, I think she arrived in 1924. And she arrived, her sisters had a place already, uh, a job already for her. She was going to be a domestic on Cromwell Ave. So as soon as she arrived here, she went to this Oh, this person's home and she took care of them and she cooked. Um, we have, I have wonderful stories and right now I'm doing a lot, looking up a, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of information um, about my ancestry so um, it's, it's really wonderful. Um, and Kathy's mother was kind of amazing woman. Um, I used when I was dating Kathy, I used to love loved her, of course, but I think I loved sitting at her in her house on O'Hara Street. He liked it because my mother used to make Irish bread yep, and the, it would be nice and hot. And the hot tea. <laughs> but she used to tell me stories. And you talk about I went to Providence College, I went to Harvard and got a good education. But I would consider Mrs. Coyne, Mrs. Winifred Coyne, one of the smartest women that I ever met. She was very articulate, very fluent in describing things. She, listen to this for one second. One time she was coming home from, she was a domestic. She worked for the rich people. She never had the opportunity to get an education. But she was, I asked her one time, I said, what about James Michael Curley, the great mayor of Boston that I, who I admired? She said, I was coming home from work one night and there was a street corner rally in uh, Broadway and Dorchester Street in South Boston. I get out of the bus, ready to go home, and I saw the rally across the street. I went across the street to listen to James Michael Curley. She says, and listen to this, she says, you know, you could stand in the snow with your shoes off all night long to listen to Mayor James Michael Curley. I mean, what a beautiful way to describe it, and, uh, uh, the, the fluency of a speaker. You know, you could come up with a lot of superlatives and different ways of describing something, but the visualizing of a person standing in the snow with your shoes off all night to listen to a speaker is quite a tribute to her Irish background and her education. So it's... You know, the Irish people had a way, even though they didn't graduate from the best of colleges, they didn't have the opportunity, but they had such a profound influence on their kids and their neighbors, and they encouraged us to go on to college and to get ahead and get involved in politics, which I did. I have to tell you, my grandfather was the same way. My grandfather fought in the West Cork Brigade. He was from County Cork. And he was very close to Tom Barry. And he was, he knew Michael Collins. As a matter of fact, my grandmother is, her name is Collins, Ellen Collins, from the same village outside of Conakilty as Michael Collins. And we were taught, we were told, that we we're a distant cousin of Michael Collins. It was always a, a great source of pride for me. And every time we go to Glasnevin, would always pay tribute and get a bouquet of flowers and plants it there. I went there with Michael Higgins, president of Ireland, who's my dear friend, and all these different people. And I was always proud. I never was able to prove that because there were no records available at the moment. Michael Collins' relationship. But I just love thinking that I'm a cousin of the man who made Ireland, Michael Collins.